You're watching VTV. Our reservations for lunch at the club. You and your easy living boy, you better cut out on some of that waiter. I'm gonna ground you. Well, yeah, look who's talking. You know, Marty, you're just jealous. You're after my job, and I know it. You know, you may be right. Okay, hero, let's get you into your flight suit. Right. The flight is divided into three phases: ground to maximum altitude maximum speed and controllability in the upper thin air, and re-entry. Now, the turbojet engine will lose its efficiency at around 50,000 feet. Allison will coast on up to 75,000 feet and then cut in the new rocket engine. He'll level off at around 500,000 feet, 100 miles above the Earth, gentlemen. For all practical purposes, Major Allison will be in space. Now, at this altitude, he'll lower the ventral stabilizers and make his high-speed stability flight progressing from position 1 to 20. Now, we know the X-80 is capable of a speed of 5,000 miles per hour. In the thin air of 100 miles altitude with no resistance, who knows? What we learn from this flight will pretty well determine our next step into space the satelloid, a man in orbit. You all set, Major? Yes, sir. Excuse me, gentlemen, I'll join you in flight control shortly. Hello, tracking station number two, Captain. This is Sands Flight Control, X-80, standing by for takeoff. Your permission, Tower. Am I clear to roll? Weather clear. You have a green light. Good luck.
50,000 feet, Colonel. Turbo power cutting out. Hello, Control. Approaching 75,000 feet. Cutting in rocket engine. Hello, Zans. This is X-80 approaching altitude 400,000 feet. Okay, Colonel. There's a new record for you. Good work, Allison. How do you feel? How's she handle it? No pain, no strain. Leveling off. Proceeding with phase number two. Over. When you're ready, kid. When you're ready. This is X-80 descent control approaching position number one. Altitude 500,000. Airspeed 1,000 plus. Central stabilizers in position. You ready, Colonel? Ready any time you are. And the Lord be with you. Over. Sands control from X-80. Position number four. Airspeed 2,000 to 000. zero, zero. We're going all the way. Control, position number eight, airspeed six thousand six zero zero zero. Position ten, airspeed seven thousand. No instability. What is it, Mark? I'm not sure. Radio contact. Colonel Martin, he's off the tracking field. Keep trying. Keep trying. Sands control to X-80. Sands control to X-80. Come in, X-80. Sands control to X-80. Sands to X-80. Come in, X-80. Re-entry glide successful. This is X-80, preparing for a landing. Are you reading me? Come in, Sands Control. You know, Marty, you're just jealous. You're after my job, and I know it. You know, you may be right. 
Okay, hero, let's get you into your flight suit. Right. Who are you people? Where am I? In a hospital or something? Where am I? What's wrong with you? Can't you understand me? Say something. I said, answer me, kid.
The new prisoner has been cleansed of radiation, my master. That is well. Let us hope we find him more cooperative than the previous prisoners. I hope Triren has learned something from his thoughts. We must be very careful. He will use all the known tricks. We can depend on that. We will proceed with the usual caution. Who are you? Major William Allison, U.S. Air Force. Won't you sit down, Major? Sir, I'd like to ask some questions. I'm very confused about what's happened to me. Yes, of course, Major. Ask your questions. I'd like to know where I am and how I got here, and who all you people are, and, and the airfield. What's happened to it? The air base. Myself, yes, I left there at 8 o'clock this morning, and a half hour later it was sh shambles, deserted. Where are Colonel Martin and the others? I, I don't understand. You are from a nation of speaking peoples. How glorious that must be. Our society is less fortunate. Your society? Yes, you see, we here in our citadel, save for my captain and myself, are deaf-mutes. Even my own grandchild, Triren. Deaf mutes? You mean everybody? I, I don't understand. There will be time for understanding if you are cooperative. Now, tell us of your nation. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. I'm sorry. You know very well what we're talking about. You're not the first spy we've ever captured. What do you mean, spy? I ask some civil questions. I expect some civil answers. I want some answers. What is this you're wearing? This symbol, what is this? New devices to deceive us, Master. We've seen such guises before. They do not fool us. It would be wise to tell us all you know. I'm Major William Allison, United States Air Force, sir. Serial number 0356-4629. That's all I'm required to tell you. I will use other measures, Supreme. I will get to the truth. Wait, Captain. Major, we have saved your life. You could have been captured by the mutants. Won't you cooperate with us? With your permission, sir. What was your purpose in coming here? I don't have any purpose. You lie. You were spying on our solar energy installation. How did you find us? Find you? I don't even know where I am. You're searching for Carl Krauss and Dr. Borman. You're one of them, aren't you? I never heard of them. Where are your people living? Would you really like to know, Captain? Yes, of course I want to know. Well, at this very minute, I don't know myself. Captain. He's impossible. You're one of the escapes, admit it. I'm an officer of the United States Air Force. I'd like someone to tell me something that makes some sense. Other nations, mutants, what kind of talk is this? He is very clever, my Supreme, but I have a plan. I can use him to our advantage. Trirene does not approve of your plan, Captain. She has found some truth in the Major's thoughts. I do not trust him, especially his thoughts. Even Tarena could be deceived. Follow through with your plan, Captain. Yes, Master. It will be done. Wait a minute. Let me go. What are you doing? Wait. It appears you have more than the usual interest in this young captive, Trirene. He's very young. This young man is an enemy. We must be very careful. I understand your wish, Triren. Captain, we see you, Captain. We see you up there. <laughs> Captain, it 
Shalom. <laughs> Who are you? I, I can't see you. Good Lord. What's wrong with you? We will kill you, Captain. Mutants. I'm not the captain. Do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? You can talk as yes. I, I will talk. Stay back. I'll break his arm. Oh. The captain and his people are your enemies. Why? They are listening. They are listening and watching us. I don't care. I want some answers. Who are these people in this citadel? They are hiding from us. They have food. They have everything. But we will find them. All of them. And kill, kill, kill them. Why are they hiding? They are infected, too. They cannot escape. Escape? Escape from what? You are escape. Like Carl Cruz. Who are the escapes? You. You and Cruz, you are escapes. We know. You left us to die. You ran from the plague. What plague? When? Long ago. Long ago, you left us here to die. You did this to us. But we will find your hiding place. And we will kill all of you. I did this. Is the whole world gone mad? <laughs> Young men. My granddaughter has chosen to protect you. She has expressed faith in what you've told us. My captain and I will trust her judgment. Trirene has a gift we do not possess. She has an extrasensory power. She is able to perceive every thought within our minds. Go with her, young men. You will have the freedom of our citadel. And our child will be happy. I was just looking around. I mean, well, Terena, I want to thank you for rescuing me. But you know, that captain seems determined that I'm an enemy. If you could only talk, if I could only make you understand, I, I'll go out of my mind if I... You know what I'm thinking, don't you? You know how important it is to me to find out exactly what happened and how I got here. The city. You 
and all the people here once lived in this city, is that right? No? Oh, your grandfather, the Supreme, he lived in the city. to this subterranean world. The mutants. The plague. Was it the plague they told me about? Jorena, try to understand this. I was on an airfield this morning. In less than an hour, everything had changed. All the people I know were gone. There was no plague where I came from. What happened? What happened to your father and mother? Kill them. Oh, I, uh, I'm very sorry. You know my thoughts before I express them, so you know I'm going to ask you about Carl Cruz. Is he here in the Citadel? Look, would you take me to him? I think if I can get to Carl Cruz, he can help me understand all this. Tirena gives me to understand that you are one of us. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think you are. How long have you been here in the Citadel? Since this morning. Well, I'm not certain. I don't know. I've lost track. Time has very little meaning here in a Catalizo film. She really informs me that you have been here for three turns of the Earth. That is three days. I've only been in this place a few hours. I took off from the field at 0800 this morning. I had hoped that you'd be able to explain this. Do not problem. excite yourself. We will explain. There will be plenty of time. Let me introduce myself. I'm Carl Kruse. Used to be General Carl Kruse. This is Professor Borman. How do you do? Major William Allison, United States Air Force. Did you say United States Air Force? Yes. What's so unusual about that? Major Ellison, what year was your flight in? I told you, today, this morning. But what day and what year, Major? It is important we know. March 5th, 1960. 1960? He's from before the plague. How is this possible, Professor? What is this plague I keep hearing about? You really don't know, do you? No, I don't know. I don't know where I am or how I got here. And I don't know who these people are in the Citadel, either. Well, Turan has found herself a big, good-looking playmate. And a fiery one, too. Major Allison, this is ex-Captain Markova. I don't know that I like what you have on your mind, Captain. Maybe when you find out what she has on hers, you'll like that better. What are you driving at? They've given you the run of this place, haven't they? Yes. So little Torini here can get busy and...
<laughs> what kind of female are you? I had to do it. Don't you understand? You mean she was reading your thoughts, things you didn't want her to know? That's right. Captain will be up here any minute to see what's happened to his gadgets. Watch out for him. He rules this place with an iron fist. Yes, so I found out. He's determined I'm an enemy spy. A escape, he called it. That's the name they have given us, we who escaped the cosmic plague. They hate us for leaving them behind. Luckily, we convinced them they needed us. Otherwise, we'd still be down in the pit with the mutants. We keep the solar power system operating. All their skills have been died off. Then the mutants are the ones who did not escape the plague, is that right? No, the people here in this citadel didn't either. They are all first stage mutants themselves. Is that why they're deaf and mute? And sterile. Except for Trevini, perhaps. Sterile? Yes. They are a dying race. There hasn't been a new birth on this citadel for the past 20 years. That's where you fit into the plan, Allison. Make no mistake about it. What do you mean? Regeneration. Trirena has chosen you as her mate. You're the last hope of this society. I don't understand it. There wasn't any plague this morning. When did it happen? Major Allison, have you any idea what year this is? Right here, right now? Of course I know what year it is. What's that got to do with it? Everything. Major, this is 2024. It's what? 2024. 64 years into the future for you, Major. The plague we are talking about, it hadn't happened in your world in 1960. It began in 1971. An atomic war? No, no. The feared nuclear war never occurred. When men set foot on the moon, all nations started to work together to push on into space. By 1970, colonies had been established on both Mars and Venus. Then if it wasn't nuclear war, what did cause it? A bombardment of cosmic radiation from outer space. Bombardment from outer space? Oh, now, wait a minute. You wait. Now, listen to me, Alison. The people of your world are concerned about nuclear fallout. Well, the danger is in the other extreme. The tons of radioactive dust that have mushroomed up into the ionosphere since the very first A-bomb test. That dust has remained up there, and it's slowly destroying the protective screen that has filtered deadly cosmic rays from space since time began. Do you understand, Major? Yes. Then all the nuclear explosions that have ever taken place on Earth have contributed to this. Yes. And every human being left has become mutant, or sterile, or a combination of both. If what you say is true, then Colonel Martin and all the others were caught up in it. What's happened to them? How can I find out? There isn't any way. It's only hope they were amongst the lucky ones who could evacuate. Evacuate? Yes. In 1973, the mass evacuation began to the planet colonies. Only the uninfected ones were permitted to go. The ones left behind moved underground as fast as possible and started building networks of tunnels, like this one. More than half the population of the world was wiped out during the first year. I see. When I landed on the air base, it was completely destroyed, demolished, deserted. You landed? You didn't crash? The captain. When they found you, they destroyed your ship. No, no. I left the air base. They captured me afterwards. Then your plane is in operating condition, sitting out there in the air base? Well, I suppose so. Unless the mutants have found it. Well, Cruz, I see you've become acquainted with our new prisoner. Yes, Captain. And it is your good fortune as well as ours. Major Allison has an excellent technical background and he's eager to help us. And as you know, Captain, we are in dire need of skilled help. Well, we shall see. Where's Tirini? I believe she's returned to her chambers, Captain. I think she's expecting a visitor. 
Come along with me, Major. We have some things to discuss. Cruz, I'm warning you. I'll tolerate no more of your scheming. If you persist, I'll see that you're back in the dungeon. We've got to get to the Major before they convince him we're his enemies. But unfortunately, I do not understand such things. I am not a scientist. My concern is a military one. I must save the last of my people. Then it is true. Your society is doomed. Major Allison, I must warn you. Carl Cruz and his group are shrewd. They'll use you. They're the most dangerous scapes I've ever encountered. It would be wise for you not to associate with them. Come, I'll show you your chamber. Major, I must tell you the truth. I understand it's not an easy thing for me to do. What they say about us is true. We are sick and dying. You cannot imagine with the envy that I look upon you, Krauss, and Dr. Borman. I, myself, am in the first stages of mutation. You? For this reason, I have no love for you who have escaped the plague. But as the Supreme has told you, we will trust in Tarini's judgment. Major Allison, I ask you, do nothing that will bring harm to her, for Tarina is our only hope. I don't believe any of the things they told me. You know I'm telling the truth, don't you? You know, you're very lovely. I keep forgetting you can read my thoughts. I wish you couldn't. Take it easy. Don't you think I know what'll happen to me if I'm caught? You were spying on us. Don't be foolish. I couldn't care less. Come here. I better get back. 
wait. Cruzy has to see you. He has a plan. I don't know whether I'd better be seeing any of you or not. We may be able to get you out of this and back to your own time. How can I possibly go back to my own time if I don't know how I got here? You don't, but Cruz and Boorman do. Look, why should it be me? Why not Cruz or Boorman? Or even you, Markova? There'd be nothing to be gained by our returning to our time. It's different with you. You're from before the plague. You may be able to... I may be able to prevent it. Is that what you mean? Of course. You've got to take this chance. If you can get back to your people and prevent the plague, all this will never happen. Let's go talk to Cruz and Borman. Yes, I agree. I have to get back to my time, to 1960. Oh, we have a very good chance, Major, if we can reverse the phenomenon that brought you here. What phenomenon did bring me here? It is what we know as a relativity paradox. It's another dimension, a fifth dimension. Fifth dimension? Professor Borman's principle of gravitation proportion brought it about. By 1970, it became the standard system used to travel to the planets at the speed of light. Speed of light? I thought 10,000 miles an hour was fast. <laughs> yes, but there is a pitfall in the system. At speeds approaching that of light, it is possible to break the time lock. The uh, barrier that holds all things in a normal time relationship to each other. That's what happens to all of us. We have slipped out of one time sphere and into another. Captain Markova broke through in 1973 during her third flight. She was transporting supply from Central Europe to the Venus planet. The captain's men destroyed her ship. It happened to Cruz and I years later. We had returned to Earth on an observation flight in 1994. Our ship crashed. 1994? But the speed I approached in the X-80 was nowhere near the speed of light. That may be. But it was just enough to create certain mathematical conditions. Let me show you. Here, these symbols represent the Earth, the Sun, and your ship. Now, consider these known facts. The Earth is rotating at a thousand miles per hour, but it is also revolving an orbit around the Sun at 66,000 miles per hour. Time, as we know it, is relative to these movements. But the entire solar system, together with other systems of our galaxy, are moving through space at over six million miles per hour. Theoretically, you had a velocity approaching the speed of light before you ever left the ground. Yes, but everything is moving at that speed together as one unit. The air, the Earth, according to the law of gravity. Time is not affected by the laws of gravity. This is what happened to you. At some point during your high-speed flight, you approached escape velocity. 25,000 miles per hour. It was at this time that you altered your flight angle. If you hadn't, probably you would have gone on into orbit. It was this angle, at a specific altitude and velocity, that broke the time barrier. For a fraction of a second, you were suspended in space, no longer interlocked with the time spheres of the Sun and the Earth. Now, during this split second, our galaxy moved onward in time for what amounted to 65 years. An instant later, you had rejoined our solar system, and the rest you know. Yes. Then if I repeat the altitude, angle of flight, and speed in directly the opposite direction, I should go back into time 65 years. Mm -hmm. Precisely. Dr. Borman is working on the formula. The three factors must be exact. And we must locate an escape from the Citadel so I can find my ship. Right. We must obtain an early map of the Citadel with the tunnel work. Your airbase surely must be included. They began construction as early as 1972. The maps are on file in the Supreme's chamber. There's only one way to get them, Major. You mean Gerene? That's the only way. No. No, I won't turn her against her own people. You have to do it. It's up to you, Major. You haven't much time to decide. Very well. I'll do it. You stay here. I'll find my way to hang. 
I've got to have your help. It's very difficult for me to know what to do, but there's something. people can live on the surface of the earth without fear of any cosmic plague. I made this tracing from the original map. Then Terrena returned it to the archives. Here, let me show you. Now, here's the citadel. I remember a wooded area and a hill. The solar antenna was atop the hill. They must have hit me with that paralyzing ray about here. This outlet must be perimeter 22B. Here's the highway. If I can find that, I can follow it directly to the airbase. We'll need the gun we have hidden. And your flight suit. Yes. What about the time lock formula? I'm working on it now. I'm almost finished. If money goes wrong, Gallison. You can be on your way within a few hours. Should be no great problem. Trireen will lead us by the guards. Not the equipment, Master. It's another one of their devices to prevent us from watching them. They're planning an escape, and I know it. I'll put a stop to this scheme. Just say the word. They will only try again. Trireni is helping them. I fear our future is done, Captain. We have returned to the cave where men first lived on Earth. We have returned to our birthplace to die.
through Allison and Torini, there is hope, Master. Perhaps it is too great a hope. There may be some truth in what they say. Some chance that this young man can return to a time before the plague. No, it's a trick. We must not let the Major escape. Do not forget, Master, our observers sighted mutant scouts again yesterday. This is a time for great caution. I will speak to him. Perhaps I can persuade him to accept our way. Yes, my Supreme. Let me bring him to you. Me question. The Supreme and I trusted you. We're aware of your scheme. I could explain to you forever. You'd never understand. I warned you to stay away from those three. Now you'll answer to the Supreme. Then you don't believe it's possible for me to return to my own time. Cruz and Borman think the plague can be prevented if I can go back and inform my people. I truly wish I could believe your reasoning. But they are using you for their own purpose. They'll bring others. They'll destroy our citadel. But you don't understand. I'm from a time before any of this has ever happened. I must go back. Such things do not exist. Cruz has created these illusions in your mind. Look, as far as I'm concerned, it's 1960. You people can believe it's 2024 or any time you please. None of this is real. It's all an illusion to me. No, my son. You're wrong. Here, touch my hand. Is that not real flesh? And these walls, are they not solid stone? And Trirene, you have touched her. Can you say she's not real? Yes, they are all very real things. But you can't prove that what you say is true. The only proof I can offer is the fact that here we are in this room. Can you prove that you are somewhere else? The Supreme, Shreyrena believes in what I'm trying to do. You have faith in her judgment, haven't you? Yes, but Shreyrena has fallen in love. Please, I ask you, give up this futile scheme. Remain here. You will inherit our domain. I'm sorry, I... I value my freedom more than this.
attempt this escape, even though we'll try and stop you. Yes. I'll try to escape, even though the captain offers all resistance. You will never leave the Citadel alive. Well, that's a chance I'll have to take. Responsibility, and I'm going to take charge. You're going back to the pit. take her back through the time barrier with you. Your world is before she was born. I'll try anyway. No. From now on, it's you and me. I'm going back through the time barrier with you. We're going back to my time. 1973. The formula. You're double-crossing Cruz and Borla. Not for long. <laughs> Leave her, Major. There's no time. Come on. being withdrawn. He wanted to take your plane, Allison. I think you're lying, Gorman. I think you're the one that wanted to make that flight. That will be all, Major Allison. Supreme was right about you and Cruz. Because we wanted to return to 1994? Yes. But you said I could prevent the cosmic plague if I could go back. You could, but you people won't believe you. This is mass murder. You're letting these people die. I will never break through the barrier in 2024 again. I will never know anything about it. Get out of your flight suit, Allison. You'll have to take it off me.
Dr. Rader. I'm sorry. We're going back to my world. We're free now. I'll take you to your grandfather. The shadow of death darkens the halls of our citadel. Our bright ray of hope is gone. It is the end of us. No. No, it's not the end. As long as we believe, there is always hope. I'll return to my time and my people. We will prevent the plague. You'll not live in a world of darkness. I pray that this you believe in is not a dream. No, it isn't. I promise you. I believe in you. I lead you safely to the surface. I believe.
all crash detailers. Stand by. <laughs> Who's the end, Sergeant? Operating room two, sir. How is he? I haven't. <laughs> What's happened to him, Doctor? What could have caused this? I don't know. I have no explanation. Not one word of this to anybody. Keep me informed, Doctor. I'll be in my office. All right, Colonel. Call the duty officer, Sergeant. I want a guard posted outside this door. This is now a restricted area. Yes, sir. This is the office of the Chief of Staff. Connect me with Secretary Lloyd Patterson's office. Urgent. Supreme gave me her ring. He showed me the way out of the Citadel. I got to my plane. That's all I remember. Thirty minutes later, Allison brought the ship in for an emergency landing. Now, the odd thing about it is this. Right after he reported in at uh, position six... Major Allison is feeling much better. Good. Mr. Secretary, General, as you know, Dill Allison is our leading research pilot here at the test center. We've always considered him fully competent and rational. Dr. Richmond and I have been with him for the past eight hours. Dr. Richmond and I are convinced that he is as mentally sound right now as any normal, well-balanced person can be. I suggest we go in. Mr. Secretary, General. Mr. Secretary. Thank you. How about it, kid? Feel like talking? I'm ready, Colonel. Now, if you feel like you need more room, just say so. Yeah, okay. Any questions, gentlemen? Mr. Patterson? No, I... I don't believe so. The plague, the cosmic plague, none of us should go through it. We've got to prevent it. Prevent what, son? The cosmic plague. Marty, we've got to stop it. Mr. Secretary, from intelligence, we've run a check on Professor Bormann and Carl Cruz. Cruz is enrolled in a West German university. He's a leading student in astronautics. And Bormann, 
another student of physics and mathematics in Amsterdam. He's written papers on new propulsion systems that have astounded the scientific world. Colonel Martin. This is Tirana's ring. The Supreme gave me. Gentlemen, we've got a lot to think about. Thanks for watching. Good night, folks. You're watching, BTV. from Mars. He saw them land from outer space. He saw them capture innocent people only to destroy. <laughs> Father turned against son. People changed into strange, weird animals. A general of the army becomes a saboteur. Trusted police turned into arsonists. The boy's parents changed into killers. But nobody's getting anywhere out there. Nobody can locate anything. Anybody. The Martians. We've got to stop the... Invaders from Mars. 
capturing humans at will for their own sinister purposes, turning them into diabolical instruments of destruction. Invaders from Mars, weird, fantastic beings of a super intelligence, ruling a race of synthetic humans and pitting them against mankind's dream to conquer the universe. Come on, step on it. Search every tunnel. We gotta find Ronaldo and the kid. When the colonel gives a signal, get back here on the double. of the Central Bureau in Washington, D.C., there was a story so strange in its implications that it defies ordinary classifications. Time, 719. An unidentified object was picked up 200 miles southwest of Point Barrow, Alaska. Height, 75,000 feet. Estimated speed, 5,000 miles per hour. White warning. 754, first interceptor flight airborne. Point of interception, 80 miles due west of San Francisco, California. 7.55, unidentified object past point of interception. Red warning. This is the account of a handful of people who in the course of one desperate night fought off an unknown, unseen menace from another world. Doubly terrifying because it was invisible. Thanks again for dropping in, and we hope you've enjoyed the evening as much as we've enjoyed having you here. Till next time, 
Please drive carefully. And good night now.